All right, everyone. Welcome to the series that you watch while Flamu is either not on stream or hasn't upda uploaded a YouTube video lately. I'm your host, Colonel Mustard, and this is another in-depth replay analysis following the Cleveland one that I posted. This is going to feature the Des Moines and another ranked game. I do have another Cleveland one on the way, but I want to uh, kind of diversify a little bit. So, first things first, as always, we're going to look at the team lineup. And what we're going to notice is there's only one battleship. This is actually really nice when playing a cruiser when there's only one battleship because that's only one ship that you really have to key off of on your positioning to make sure that they can't delete you. <laughs> when there's two battleships or even four in a ranked game when you're a cruiser, that's a lot of keys you have to keep track of. This makes it way easier. There are three DDs, so I'm not saying this game's going to be easy. I'm just saying my key on the battleship is easier. The DDs are another story. There are three of them. We do have Hindenburgs, and I've, I, 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 I play clan battles. I have like almost 500, over 500 battles in clan battles, and my main is probably the Hindenburg. The only ship I don't want to fight in close quarters, really, uh, cruiser-wise, is the Des Moines. Its AP angles have surprising penetration, not, not just penetration, but their penetration angles are better than other heavy cruisers. So you really can't open up to use torps in front of them unless you can bully their health pool. So you, if you can't bully their health pool, you got to go around them to torp. We might cover that when the next clan battle season comes up. We'll see. But Minotaur Hindenburg on my team, not as strong as double Hindi on their team, but we're going to go ahead and uh, keep this moving along. This is a uh, kind of a fairly long game, and it's a game where I actually get a little confused on what I should do. So... So I'm moving into a position that I know is good for the Des Moines. It's a position that my clan uses. It's a position that I've used before. So I'm going to the island at E4 to take up a position that I know can essentially contest A or at least give our uh, DDs a good chance at capping it if they don't pressure it. The advantage we have is that I'm a radar, just a radar cruiser. They don't have one. I don't think. Let me double check. Okay, no, they do have one. I lied. Sorry, I'm not a professional yet. <laughs> you want you want a professional commentator? You can uh, always just stick with Flamu. <laughs> not Flamu. Flamu is very good. He, I I subscribe subscribe to him on both my uh, both my channels. He's a very good player. And he helped me get through, like, the Kiev. The Kiev was the big video that got him big. I That's where I found him. It's because I was struggling with the Kiev when it was at Tier 7. And then once I watched his video, I was a monster in it. Anyway, let's go back to this battle. So the Minotaur is taking a very questionable position here. If he's a radar minnow, it's not terrible. But the, the, the problem with the Minotaur taking this position is that his, uh, his turret arrangement restricts what he can actually do on an island anchoring position. Now, an island anchor, Des Moines, Moskvas, they do this in clan battles a lot. You pick an island, you anchor on it, and you pretty much say, hey, I, I'm, you have to push me out to win this. Now, I get spotted, so I pop my radar at this Yu Yang. I'm trying to get some chunk shots, but I'm also trying to avoid hitting this Minotaur. Minotaur doesn't really care about if he hits me, apparently, and he doesn't even hit the enemy DD. Now I do see this Hindenburg. Now this Hindenburg makes a misplay. He's going bow in. Bow in Hindenburgs don't work. Now in the last replay I talked about how I use a Hindenburg where I do a reverse push where I put my stern toward an enemy and back up to them. That way I can still use all my guns. This Hindenburg should be doing the same. He should have turned out in this situation to bring his guns to bear. The reason you play Hindenburg is because you have all those guns. Now I see, I know what he's about to do. He's about to dart down south. So I'm already switching to AP and I'm going to try and punish that as much as I can. It's been a little while since I played Des Moines, but I still get rewarded with a single Citadel and two over pens. And then I get another little nice chunk there too. So I'm going to sit here for a little bit 
trying to figure out what the team, the enemy team is doing, primarily. Uh, it seems like they wanted to push A, but they got A so easy that they might pull back. So I'm thinking about potentially repositioning this Minotaur. I'm trying to work, try to work myself around him. He, this is not a position that a Minotaur really should be in, in my opinion. Sorry. So I'm kind of looking at what they're doing. It looks like they want to go back to A and maybe push to our B cap since A is... I think he is a radar Minotaur. Now there is a gearing there. And I think he's close enough where I think I can maybe get some decent shots on him. So I'm going to go ahead and take some. He is pretty far away. We do lose spotting because our Shema decides to smoke. Uh, kind of a bad decision because there is a Des Moines right in front of him. And I don't think that's going to end well for him. I'm still watching that Hindenburg. I'm thinking whether or not should I push in. What should I do? The Yamato up north is an issue. And I know that I have to. I can't push up too much because that Yamato could wreck me. But it does look like we are going to be able to get A. I decided to throw some shots at the Yamato. Seems like a good call. Put some harassment on him. Maybe whittle him down a little bit. The, the enemy team is really spread out in this point, which makes it hard to determine exactly what they intend to do. I do notice the gearing um, heading to our A cap, but I'm not really in a position to address that. And before long, I'm going to tell the uh, the Minotaur and the Hindenburg to go down there and do something about it. I'm watching my backside to make sure that, you know, I'm because right now I am vulnerable to their cap. But I do notice that Des Moines isn't looking at me, so I think I'm going to try to get some harassment fire on him. At this point, I'm just trying to put any pressure I can in, in any place and see what I can get done. The Des Moines is a really good ship. Uh, I really like it, specifically because of its AP. And if you know how to play it well, if you know how to work with islands, work with your work with uh, your anticipation, it's one of the strongest tier tons. Maybe one of the lower performing ones, but it's still one of the strongest, in my opinion. Especially in an anchored position, which is why I'm, I've rotated my anchor to another side at this point. I want to pretty much see what I can do. <laughs> I'm not really sure what our teams, what our team wants to do here. We did, we've that we're down two DDs. And I do screw up here, and I hit an island. It's going to take me a bit to get off this island. And right now, we are, we're, down, we're down a ship, but we're up on caps, which is great. But the problem is that gearing is absolutely going to be 100%. And at this point, I do tell Minnow and Hendy, go to B. We can defend A. I'm confident I can take on a Hindenburg and a Yu Yang. Our Kerr first. Now, I've given some shit to battleships in uh, some of my replays. Generally speaking, there are some great battleship players out there. I, I, will, I will absolutely admit that. Uh, in my ranked battle experience, I never got matched with any of them. Uh, they all were kind of potatoes, and the Kerr first on my team is a particularly whiny one and has some questionable decision making. This Hindenburg's trying to dive in on a Kerr first, which is stupid beyond, you know, but he's still in, the Kerr first is still in a 2v1, so I'm trying to equalize this. So I whip out my AP. And the Des Moines is one of the few ships at this range that can actually Citadel a Kerr first. There's not a ton of there's not a ton of ships that can do it because the the Hindenburg has a turtle back. I easily dispatch him and I bounce all his AP shells. 
he didn't really have a chance there. It, once he pushed, he was dead. I'm going to try to get some harassment fire, and I am keying that Yamato. And I'm going to cut my, I'm cutting my speed right now. I do not want to come out on this island. You notice I got three people targeting me. Now the Hindenburg asked, Minnow, are you good? Can you handle this on your own? Uh, well, probably not, because he's a Minnow. And if he gets spotted, that Yamato is going to wreck him. Now you notice I stopped probably at the best time. I get undetected. And now I'm going to go ahead and push in. At this point in time, I'm like, okay, if that Yu Yang can get baited to coming back toward us, I can maybe deal with him. But our Kerr first decides, hey, I'm just going to hunt this DD. And he goes, I have to kill this DD, can't turn. Uh, no, you absolutely could. You're in a smoke screen. You could totally fucking turn. You could turn left and run back down to B, which would be where we need you. We don't need you at A anymore. Their team is abandoning it. So I'm thinking about maybe pushing uh, in, into this gap and getting the rear side of the Amato anchoring on this island and then pushing in afterward. But I'm looking at the south and I'm going, eh, I don't I don't think they can handle it. Oh, no, they absolutely can't handle it. Minotaur just got wrecked by Des Moines because he wasn't paying any attention. So at this point, I'm going, I got to get back down to B. This Hindenburg needs my help more than this Kerr first. I'm not going to chase a Yu Yang to the top of the map and get me and a battleship out of position. If the battleship dies, whatever. I need to I need to help this Hennenberg as much as I can. And that's when I tell the Hendy, I'm coming down, I just need you to stall. Now this Yamato, he's still got a decent health pool, and it'd be nice if our Kerfers would actually do something about that, but he won't. Well, not really. So, he, the Yamato is, I don't, I'm not really sure where he was aiming there, but I want him to aim at me. I want him to take shots. I'm, I have a neutral rudder right now. I can dodge if ne necessary. I want that Yamato shooting me. I do not want him shooting the Hendy. So he does take a shot. I do a quick turn. Yamato misses. Now, once you do that kind of maneuver on a battleship, a good battleship player will take note and will attempt to predict you next time. So you got to be careful about doing that. And think. And I, I'm thinking this Yamato might actually be good. He's not looking at me. He's paying attention to the Hendy, which is the biggest threat to his team right now. And so I'm trying to, like, hey, dude, pay attention to me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, okay, he does. This time I'm going to turn in. If he's predicting me to turn out, I don't intend on doing it. I'm going to cut in. Primarily because I want to get to B as fast as possible. But he doesn't end up able... He's not able to get a shot on me. And now I'm going to go dark for a little while while I move into B and see what I can do to help our Hendy, who's at 11k against a 25k Hindenburg a gearing and a Des Moines. He's not in a good position. He needs my help more than this first does. Kerfers has the broad side of a Yamato. Unfortunately, I don't think he does much damage to him. So I'm moving in right now. I'm thinking maybe I can get behind this island, harass the Yamato, and be able to help. But at this point, I kind of, I kind of abandon this idea. I know I can't do that. Oh, our Kerfers is shooting HE, by the way. Another huge... He gets a broadside Yamato and shoots HE. If you're shaking your head, I am too. So right now, I'm going to just keep harassing this Yamato. That's my goal. I need to harass him. I need to get that health pulled down a bit. I'm baiting my broadside a little bit to see if he will fall for the same trick. Okay, he just fired, so I'm turning. And I'm looking at that Hindenburg now. It looks like he was trying to predict what I was doing. So he's better He's better than most Yamato players. He anticipated that I was going to try and evade. And you can just see... I mean, this AP is great against other cruisers. Anything broadside, this AP is great. If you can hit your shots, you're doing good. So I get my high caliber. And points-wise, we're looking pretty good. We're looking really good. Um... Problem is they got two caps. And that Yu Yang, if I was him, I'd push an A. 
I'd grab A and get all three caps and make this a much harder game. And that's exactly what he's going to do. So what I want to do is help the Hennenberg get B. I'm going to keep farming this Yamato a bit. He's aiming on me. I see the shot. And so I turn. I don't turn as much as I, as I did before. I kind of slow down my turn. He only gets one over, well, one pen. And I know our curve first is about to come out. So that's going to take up a lot of the Amato's attention, which is going to hopefully buy me some free damage. And it looks like that's exactly what it's going to do. His, the Amato's attention is fully on our curve first. Our curve first has finally switched to AP now that the Amato's angled. That's the time where you use armor piercing, right? No, it's not, but... At least he's at least he's actually you know trying. I see the Des Moines and I go okay, AP time. If he's not paying attention, I can clear him out right now. Our Hardenberg's still doing pretty good. I think he's healed up a bit. And now that he's t he just the Hardenberg kills the Des Moines, so now I'm going directly to keep farming this Yamato, try to save the Kerr first. And I'm looking at this torpedo spread, and I go, Shimada's paying attention to me. He could kill me right now. I need to get close to that left torp and be able to turn out to the right if I have to. I'm paying attention to the Yamato's guns. He doesn't really pay attention to me. Kerr first is going to complain very soon about how this DD is annoying him. The DD's just spamming him. Now, that that whip right there was me trying to decide, do I go to B or do I go to A? Alright, it's a 2v2 now. Two DDs versus two cruisers. Yeah, there he is. Can someone else deal with that? F word DD. <laughs> Problem is, if he would have turned out sooner and came down, you know, he wouldn't have had that issue. I would have been in between him and the DD, but he took too long. So now I'm just darting straight to A. All I want to do is go to A. Hindenburg takes a tort, but he doesn't die, thankfully. If he died, this would have been much different. Uh, gearing is is there, but I'm still... I need to go straight ahead. I need to get undetected. Okay, I'm undetected. So I know the Yu Yang isn't within my detection range, which is good. I would like to shoot that gearing, and I think I'm actually going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to chuck a random shot backwards, but I'm pretty sure this Hennenberg has him. Still going to chuck another shot. That uh, white, the widespread DD salvos. They can hit Flamu, but they can't hit me. <laughs> Still making sure that my route is... Uh, in line with that torpedo spread so I can and then of course the guy says hey get an A yeah, well no shit dude I'm working on it <laughs> like the mine only goes so fast man we are ahead on points all I need to do is essentially get into A to slow their point crawl and this game's over there's not much else left for me to do the Yu Yang I will spot the Yu Yang and I'll shoot him but uh, if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe um, I do have a Patreon if you want to support me that way. And uh, I am running a uh, comment contest, also known as a contest by other YouTubers, where uh, give me a good starting saying like Flamu's hello, hello, or Jingle's howdy, folks. And I'm going to give them a try on, uh, on future videos. So go ahead and put those comments down below. I won't get this shot up, but uh, thanks for watching. And uh, this game does end in a win.